Hello, Mr. Lucas here, with a bit of a moustache and a bit of whatever these are called, and not much of a beard. I just thought I'd see if I could grow one. It's sort of working, isn't it? Sort of. A bit thinner there. Actually, it's not thin, it's just lighter. Anyway, I'm here because Dean Boyle has asked me to answer some questions that he has sent me about uh, living with alopecia. So let's do this. So, um, has your mental health ever been affected by your experiences of alopecia? If so, how did you overcome that? And what words of advice, I love this moustache, and what words of advice would you pass on to others who have experienced either the same or something similar? Well, I, I think growing up, uh, definitely it was, we didn't really use the word mental health then, but I lost my hair when I was six. So growing up, it was, it was tough because not only did I not fully understand what was happening to me, but the people around me didn't either. So kids at school would make uh, comments and, uh, and, and adults would make comments as well. It wasn't much fun. And then sort of going through puberty, my self-image wasn't great. So it was, yeah, it was tough. It was, it was, it was tough. I lost my hair in 1980 when I was six. So um, it was weird. People would call me Kojak uh, generally because there was a TV detective who had no hair. But there weren't many role models or it was it just wasn't really alopecia wasn't really something that was discussed and also um some kids would tell me i had leukemia and i didn't know if my parents were lying to me about that to protect me so there was a part of me that thought maybe there was something a greater challenge than leukemia going on so yeah it was it was it was uh, it was tough but I, I always think probably for for girls and women who lose their hair would be tougher in a way. Um, yeah, that's the answer. Not going to lie. Doesn't bother me as an adult remotely. Um, could you tell me about your experience of wearing wigs from working in the media industry? And have you felt more yourself with or without them? Well, I love um, transforming myself. I get a buzz from that. So a wig is obviously often a big part of that, you know. And so... Makeup artists love me because there's no hairline that they have to that they have to cover. So uh, a good wig looks smashing on me. And uh, so, yeah, so that's an area where being bald has actually really helped. Um, with you being in the entertainment industry, have you had any setbacks as a result of you having alopecia? If so, how did you deal with them? Well, I think when I was a young actor, when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16, when I, when I really wanted to get into the profession. I had it in my head that I wouldn't get cast as anything because I had no hair, that it was really unlikely. But that's when I started doing stand-up comedy. I thought, well, I'll write my own stuff and sort of give myself work as a consequence. And, uh, and, that, and that's kind of what happened. But no, I don't think, I don't think uh, it's been a huge setback in my industry um, because... So I can't get over this stupid moustache um, because because uh, of wigs. And actually, I think it's worked to my benefit because I've been able to transform myself in ways that a lot of actors can't. Um, notice I refer to myself as an actor there. On a personal level, thank you. Pay me a nice compliment. Uh, who has inspired me? Dean would like to know. Well, when I was a kid and my hair fell out, I wrote to Duncan Goodhue. Uh, who was uh, uh, an Olympic, uh, I think, gold medal winning um, swimmer. He was always on TV and he'd had alopecia. He, he um, had been in a tree. He'd fallen out of a tree while playing, I think, and the shock had made his hair fall out. And uh, one of the amazing things about Duncan Goodhue was that he had said that he thought he was a faster swimmer because he had no hair uh that uh it was that is, is sort of he was aerodynamically um advantaged in a way in the water i don't know if that is true um but it's possible isn't it so so um i i really looked up to him and i wrote to him when i was six years old and he wrote me a lovely letter back and sent me some badges and one of the badges was a was a, a little um a drawing of a little cartoon of, of duncan's face and it said bald is beautiful I used to wear that badge to school. And then the last question, with you working in entertainment, I feel that viewers like myself want to see themselves reflected on screen 
and they should be properly represented by those who make up the television industry. Given television's importance to our cultural lives, diversity matters, not just for the sector, but for wider society too. Do you feel that television is doing enough to reflect this? Now, don't, I don't know, if you, are you saying, Dean, which you may be, are there enough people with alopecia on TV? Um, I don't think there's that many people with alopecia on TV, it's true. But I don't know that there's that many people with alopecia. Uh, not like what we've got. I mean, there's some. But we're very lucky people. But uh, are there enough bald people on TV? Yes. You only have to watch EastEnders. I don't, know, I don't think the Mitchell brothers are in it anymore. But, um, yeah, there's bald people on telly. I mean, it's fine. Uh, Elmer Fudd has got no hair. I don't think Snoopy's got much hair. I think bald representation in, in the cartoon world is pretty good. Um, so I'm grateful for that. Dean, thank you for your lovely questions. And anyone who watched, lots of love from me. And uh, mwah!